corazón es tan difícil de lograr Tener contigo me dio un compromiso Para que no te vaya, tú lo debes de ayudar Rápidamente debes decidirlo Association, we are announcing it for the first time right here. We're back now with a new warning today from the American Heart Association. De los Estados Unidos, la doctora Regina Benjamin, miembro directivo de la American Heart Association. Case studies indicating COVID may lead to heart attacks. Joining me right now is Dr. Mitchell Elkin. He's president of the American Heart Association. <laughs> So have you joined the Boss Family workouts recently with Twitch and Allison? I mean, we love those two from So You Think You Can Dance, Ellen, and Dancing with the Stars. But now they have teamed up with the American Heart Association. It's live with Kelly and Ryan. Years ago, the American Heart Association revised their out-of-hospital CPR protocol, and it's called Hands Only CPR. She's now sharing her story as part of the American Heart Association's Don't Die of Doubt campaign. This is all about the American Heart Association's healthy bond for life. Late today, the American Heart Association putting out an advisory to pediatricians. As sales of marijuana soared during the pandemic, a new warning from the American Heart Association. 
Tonight, the American Heart Association sounding the alarm. A new report from the American Heart Association. Heart disease is the number one killer of men and women here in the U.S. and worldwide. So when the American Heart Association puts out a scientific statement, people tend to pay attention. <laughs> Según la Asociación Americana del Corazón, hay tres factores que contribuyen a padecer del COVID complicado o fatal. And joining me is Dr. Mariel Jessup, the American Heart Association's top medical officer. Dr. Michelle Albert is president of American Black Cardiologists. She's working with the American Heart Association to research COVID in black women. Dr. Larry Mittenall is an American Heart Association volunteer. Can I tell you for his Molecule McDonald tonight talks with the CEO of the American Heart Association about surprise medical bills. This is why I love the American Heart Association. They step up in real time to address a need. Wow, I love that video. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny Grammer, and I am part of the regional team here at the American Heart Association in the Eastern States. And I just want to say thank you for joining us today. I am so excited and so honored to serve as your host tonight for our first ever Heart of Lancaster digital experience. Man, did we think we'd be here another year later? I'm not sure that we did. You know, it's been it's been a challenging year for many of us, <laughs> Captain Obvious over here, right? But tonight we are here to celebrate what we have accomplished together to make our community a healthier place for all. Your ongoing support makes it possible for the American Heart Association to continue its mission to be a relentless force of a world for a world of longer, healthier lives. And that's why we're all here today. And I really want to thank you. Um, for all of your support throughout these last uh, few years. I mean, I'm sure we have some longtime volunteers with us tonight. You know, your ongoing support is what, what makes this possible. And then, you know, even though we were not able to be together in person, we are honored that you chose to spend your evening with us uh, tonight. We want you to fully enjoy this year's Heart of Lancaster digital experience. So take advantage of all the ways that you can interact and show your support. We hope to provide you with some inspiration, some levity, and some connection tonight with like-minded folks. So one of the easiest ways is right there in the chat box, the chat box. I mean, it's become our way of communicating, hasn't it? And just in case you've been able to live in a Zoom-free world these last several months, lucky duck, just a reminder that in the toolbar along the bottom of your screen, you will see a chat icon. Click on that to open the chat box. Make sure that you click all panelists and attendees. While I'd love for us to have a one-on-one, -on -one, I wanna make sure everybody can hear from you uh, and not just us behind the scenes. So then you type your message and you hit enter. Shall we test this bad boy out? I'm here for it. You know what, let's spread some joy and some gratitude. I would love to know what all of you are most grateful for this past year. You know, practicing gratitude every day is actually really, really good for your heart. And hey, one of my favorite quotes is, every day may not be good, but there is good in every day. So let's hear it. What are you grateful for? I would love to hear from you. What are you grateful for over this past year? You know, for me, mine has been time. I actually have had time to read so many great books. I love to read and I've learned to slow down. It's a hard one for me. It's a hard one. So I would love to hear from you. Let's type it in the chat box here. What are you grateful for? And remember to click all panelists and attendees so we can everybody can see your messages there. Oh, family, Justin is, is happy about family. Uh, George, his wife in the great outdoors, love that. George, way to get brownie points for saying your wife. I love that for you. Rachel, quality time with my puppy. Oh, amen to that. My dog is like, you're never going back to work. Like you're staying here with me. That's correct. I love that. I love that time. Oh, good. Great books. Okay. Well, Heather, please share with me some of your favorite books because I am on the hunt for more this year. It really has been a game changer. And 
you know what we we do with it what we will so i am super honored and grateful that all speaking of puppies there she is um so we also want to encourage you to join the conversation on the old instagram facebook and twitter maybe snap a selfie of your fashion tonight and just so you know wearing sweatpants and a red shirt is fashionable okay trust me it's like the red carpet who are you wearing sweatpants you know what i mean i'm all about it okay so we want to see how you're celebrating lancaster so does jersey that's my dog she also wants to know how you're celebrating so share your photos from tonight's event on social media using hashtag heart of lancaster and tag us at aha pennsylvania and again you can find us on facebook twitter and instagram and hey, after you snapped your selfie, we want you to keep your phones out, okay? And I want you to text, okay, pull up your messages right here, right? And in the number bar, you wanna write 41444. And the message, the text for the message should be Lancaster Heart. If you text Lancaster Heart to 41444, you will receive a link back to make a donation to the American Heart Association. And you know what? Your support is more appreciated than ever. Our mission has been exasperated. Our need for our mission has been exasperated over this last year. I don't think I have to tell any of you that. Um, and so every dollar we raise tonight will go directly to the mission. So let's see what some other people have said. All of my family and my employer, I love that. Quality time with family, I love that. Make sure that you put all panelists and attendees if you wanna chat with our, with our fellow friends here in the chat box. Okay, so tonight we have set a goal of $5,000, okay? We wanna raise $5,000 right here in this virtual room all together here. We'll be tracking our progress on the thermometer. So you'll see that up there, check that out. So we've got some momentum going, 895. Thank you to all these folks that have already donated. We appreciate you. Text Lancaster to 41444. That's also in the chat box for you if you would like to um, give a donation. And you know, speaking of donations and support and all the things that make things possible in the AHA world, today's event would not have been possible without the support of our amazing sponsors. Thank you, especially to our local sponsors, Guttenberg Charitable Foundation, UPMC, Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, Wellspan Health, Barley Snyder, Fulton Bank, Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster, Argyers Marathi Neurological sorry, Neurosurgical Associates of Lancaster, Highmark, Penn State Health, and m and Bank. Your support is just, it means the world to us. Um, the fact that our sponsors have stuck with us through so many ups and downs tells us that they, they know that their investment is going a long way and they know that their support is making a huge difference for their neighbors, their friends, their family. So we appreciate that. And hey, if you're here tonight with one of these great sponsors, I wanna hear from you. Talk to me, talk to me, Goose. Who's in the chat with us from, uh, from UPMC? Who's in the chat with us from Penn State Health? I wanna hear from you. Let's hear it. Who are you here on, and on, or, um, on behalf of? You know, we're proud of the work that we've been able to do in the community with the support of these sponsors. I'm gonna show you right now what these sponsors have done. And we want you to learn a little bit more about some of the work that we've done specifically with Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health. Check this out. So we're super fortunate at the American Heart Association that we've got great community partners in with Penn Medicine and Lancaster General Health. And we were able to work with them this past school year and put together a really great school application that we put out to local schools. Lampeter Peter Strasburg High School put together such a great application where they were really focusing on reducing their students and staff caloric beverage intake. By installing water filtration systems, we're able to provide great quality drinking water. We know so far in the week that they've been here, we've been able to reduce almost 3,000 bottles of water use. A lot of the water fountains are, are it's warm water. It doesn't taste that great. So um, as soon as I saw the opportunity to get filter, cold filtered water in school, it was perfect. A lot of the kids are actually starting to bring in their own bottles now. When you're decreasing that sugar, you're you know helping their, their brains actually work better without all the sugar. And their brains work better with when they're hydrated. When they're when they're dehydrated during the school day, they're not concentrating. They develop headaches, stomach aches. So we have installed two inside the school and one outside. This is the external one, which is weatherproof, which is great, and next to the track field. So as sporting 
games are going on or individuals are coming out and walking around the track, maybe on the weekends, they can uh, take their water bottle and fill it up here and be able to have great tasting filtered water. So over the past few years, we've been really fortunate to have such a great community partner with Penn Medicine Lancaster General Health. So we've installed four bike repair stations around the county, as well as bike racks at a few elementary schools to encourage kids to bike to school and be able to lock up their bikes. And we also have several teaching gardens throughout the county as well, um, where we're encouraging kids to understand the concept of gardening and fruits and vegetables and how to grow their own um, fruits and vegetables and the health benefits of those and eating healthy. Hi, my name is Justin Walzel, and I'm proud to serve as the president of the American Heart Association's Board of Directors in Lancaster County. Supporting the work of the American Heart Association has never been more important. That is why we are so grateful for the continued support of our volunteers, donors, and sponsors. Thanks to them, we've been able to pursue our mission and make a lasting impact right here in Lancaster County. In 2019, we installed the first three filtered water bottle filling stations at the Lampeter Strasburg High School with the support of Penn Medicine Lancaster General Health. With their continued support, we're thrilled to be planning even more installations at additional schools in Lancaster County. We've also worked with Lancaster General Health over the past few years to install bicycle repair stations and bike racks throughout Lancaster County, making it easier for people to stay active. The next bike repair station is coming soon to Lidditz at the new Trail Connection Point. We're also working to improve access to healthy food. Pre-pandemic, there were over 52,000 people who were food insecure according to Hunger Free Lancaster County. And according to Feeding America, those numbers are expected to increase. Thanks to local donor Carol Culleton and Guntenberg Charitable Foundation, the American Heart Association worked with Brightside Baptist Church and Lancaster Farm Fresh Cooperative to provide three healthy food pop-up events this spring and into the summer. Community members received a produce box filled with healthy vegetables and fruits, along with American Heart Association education materials and recipes to help them cook a healthy meal. This food distribution has served over 400 people in Lancaster City. At the Brightside Opportunity Center, you will continue to find our American Heart Association blood pressure kiosk that is available to help anyone at the center monitor their blood pressure at any time. You can also find another of our blood pressure kiosks at the Clipper Magazine Stadium. Both of these blood pressure kiosks were made possible with the ongoing support of the Guntenberg Charitable Foundation. Nearly one in four Pennsylvania teens report that they vape or use e-cigarette products. With the help of Wellspan Health, we were able to bring important information about youth vaping directly to parents, educators, and advocates through a virtual community conversation. This took place during a critical time in the spring as schools were reopening and the information was timely and needed. The conversation featured Wellspan Ephrata pulmonologist Dr. Scott Silverstein. As Dr. Silverstein and other panelists confirmed, Teen vaping is a dangerous trend in every school and every grade, including right here in Lancaster County. It's leading teens to form what could be a lifetime addiction to nicotine and tobacco products, and as Dr. Silverstein has witnessed, irreversible health consequences. This issue and the health of our youth will continue to be a priority in our region. We're also helping to equip local schools with the tools they need to train their students in life-saving skill of hands-on CPR. Thanks to sponsors like Barley Snyder and Steve and Donna Jones, we've been able to donate CPR in-school training kits to schools across Lancaster County. These kits will be used to teach the next generation how to respond confidently in the event of a cardiac emergency and we know that immediate bystander CPR can double or even triple the chance of survival for someone who experiences a sudden cardiac arrest. I am proud of the progress that we have made this past year 
in the face of many challenges. And I look forward to working with all of our supporters in the year ahead to continue our mission. Science is at the heart of everything the American Heart Association does, and your support is what helps the American Heart Association continue to be a leader in funding cardiovascular research. Here to share more about some of the groundbreaking work happening right here in our region is Dr. Hamal Gada of the UPMC Heart and Vascular Institute. I'm Hamal Gada. I'm the president of the Heart and Vascular Institute and the medical director of the Structural Heart Program at UPMC Pinnacle. I'm also an interventional cardiologist. I do a lot of minimally invasive structural heart procedures. Those are procedures that affect the structure and function of the heart as they relate to the various valves within the heart and actually the chambers within the heart as well. Uh, we are involved in a variety of different clinical trials investigating novel therapies that decrease the invasiveness and limit the invasiveness of these previously very invasive surgical procedures. And so we're able to do these procedures and get patients out of the hospital the very next day, changing not only their longevity, but improving their quality of life in a very uh, significant way. I think the most impressive thing in my career has been the rapidity at which we've been able to answer clinical questions that are relevant to our patient populations. So being able to start and finish clinical trials that are extremely important to help us define better therapies for patients uh, that we can institute more rapidly than what was previously available. And so getting these minimally invasive valve procedures that I'm involved with up and going uh, from basically the start in the early 2000s to where it is now, which is basically mainstay of therapy, uh, that would not have been possible without groundbreaking clinical trials. Through the AHA and its efforts, uh, clinical trials are available to our patients at UPMC Heart and Vascular Institute. And I'm really gratified by the fact that we have such a great agency uh, really supporting clinical trial initiatives across the board, um, not just in my space, but in a variety of other spaces uh, within the realm of cardiovascular disease. I think we have to make sure that access to care is not jeopardized by something like the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that we've obviously invested a lot of time and resources to uh, providing support to our telehealth structures. And I think that that needs something, that's something that needs to be uh, further vetted. Uh, but in addition to that, we do a lot of virtual observations and proctoring of the procedures that we do at UPMC Heart and Vascular Institute. Uh, that's something that I think has been essential to help other physicians learn some of the techniques, uh, some of the things that we do uniquely here. And I think that an emphasis on information technology is absolutely required uh, moving forward and making sure that we all stay connected uh, no matter what our physical restrictions are. I think it's important to remember that even with COVID-19 going on, that you still have very significant health issues that matter. Now, clearly, we show up to work day in, day out to help patients uh, with their underlying non-COVID-related medical issues. Of course, we're doing this in the safest possible way making sure that we have uh, the best in class hygienic uh, apparatus set up for our patients to feel safe and comfortable. I think the American Heart Association does a very good job in democratizing care. And so making sure that everyone uh, is uh, able to receive the same quality of care or as close to the same quality of care as everyone else in the country. And I think that the American Heart Association has made that a primary mission by supporting uh, not just its community outreach initiatives, but uh, the, the, the fact that it is a very big benefactor to clinical trial development. And so having that focus has been something that has advanced the care uh, in this country and has created a level playing field uh, for everyone in this country to receive the same quality of care. Thank you so much to our Lancaster Board President, Justin Wazel and Dr. Gatta for sharing just how important your support is tonight to continue this great work. And remember that you can still invest in this work by texting Lancaster Heart to 41444. You know, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that our goal tonight is to raise $5,000 in our virtual room, but here 
But before tonight's event actually even started, we had a very dedicated group of women who spent the past nine weeks, you guys, nine weeks raising money to make both a financial impact on the mission of the AHA and a direct impact on their community. So here to introduce our inaugural, that's right, our first year Women of Impact class is our first Women of Impact chair, Janet Sirk. Take it away, Janet. Thank you, Jenny. It was an honor to be chosen as chair for our first ever Women of Impact campaign and share this journey with two fellow Women of Impact nominees, Heather Elliott and Marilyn Berger Shank. This campaign challenged all of us to put our hearts into the Go Red for Women mission. For nine weeks, the three of us used our personal networks to build a team of supporters. Our team was there to not only help raise funds, but also to join us on our mission to build healthier habits and healthier communities. We used our influence to share important health information with our family and friends, community, and raise awareness about the important work of the American Heart Association. We had the opportunity to get creative with our own fundraising efforts. For example, I've had the pleasure of working with Envision Train Fitness, Lakeser Virtual Reality Lounge, and Station One Center for the Arts. These wonderful local businesses helped me support my campaign by hosting fundraising events throughout the past nine weeks. I'm so excited to share with you the grand total raised by our Women of Impact class. But first, I want you to meet my fellow nominees, starting with Heather Elliott. Heather works as the practice manager with Wellspan Family Health, Georgetown, and Christiana and Wellspan Family Medicine, Meadowbrook, in Leola. She's the mother of two young boys. And almost exactly one year ago, she became a survivor. Let's hear Heather's story. My name's Heather Elliott. I am 34 years old and I live in Lancaster County. It was June 18th, 2020. And I um, started experiencing some upper left-sided chest pain. Um, pretty intense. I was getting ready for work and getting my kids up. I had two boys and we were getting ready to go to my mom's. So I really just thought it was my, my reflux and that I couldn't have been having a heart attack or any cardiac issue at 33. And I wasn't stressed. It was a really good day. Um, started off normal. I've had way more stressful mornings with two little boys. Um, so I definitely didn't think it was cardiac related. And that's why I kind of just went about my day and figured it would go away. So after dropping them off, I drove another 20, 25 minutes to my office. And um, although I didn't make it, so I had to pull over. Things started to get a little worse for me. My chest pain was definitely worse. I began sweating. The ironic thing or the weird thing was my fingers went stick straight. I, I literally could not bend them and my arms felt like they weighed a ton. Uh, so I called my husband and he got a hold of 911. By the time 911 arrived, or I should say the ambulance, I, um, I was feeling better, so I actually declined to go with the ambulance. My blood pressure was normal. My symptoms had started to resolve, and we um, decided just to go to my actual doctor's office. And the EKG that was performed compared to my previous EKG did reveal some changes, and I was having ST depressions. At that time, I declined blood work. Uh, we all felt that it could be anxiety-related. I didn't really fit the picture of heart attack. I'm usually a pretty calm person. So for me to think I had an anxiety attack, I just, I couldn't overcome that. And I decided to reach out and get that blood work that I declined. And my primary care doctor called me that evening about nine o'clock with the results of my blood work. I had an elevated troponin. Because I have been in the medical field for quite a while now, um, once the results came back, I clearly knew what the blood work level meant. Um, it is a cardiac enzyme marker, so I knew that there had to have been some type of cardiac damage, and she had wanted me to report to the emergency room, so I did, and we got to the emergency room. Next thing I knew, I had a whole bunch of people in my room just getting information, more blood work, um, x-rays, things like that. They determined that I likely suffered a coronary artery spasm closed my um, coronary artery about 70% and I was um, administered nitroglycerin and started on a new regimen of medication. 
So I have been religious about taking my medication just because I do worry, when is it going to happen again? Um, since my prognosis has been good, I have been better, but those first couple months, the emotional effects that I had were, were new to me. I hadn't experienced those concerns or those worries or the why was also another issue. Um, a lot of people say it's because of stress. I will put a lot of stress on myself. I'm a mom, I work full time and I'm in school for my bachelor's. That is the only reason we, we can really come up with anything. So I think that was one of the more difficult parts of it, of not knowing really why that happened and still not really knowing. It's the coronary artery spasm that caused my heart attack is not something that a lot of people are aware of or it's just not talked about often. So it's important for me to let people know about it just so that um, they don't ignore those symptoms of chest pain and shortness of breath. I had wrote a blog um, just to tell my story so that people realize that this is something that can happen to them, even at 33. And I think after heart attacks, it's something that we do to ourselves where, um, I know I did it to myself where I felt like I didn't want the attention, that I kind of felt like people may have thought or maybe doubted me or that I was making it out to be something that it wasn't. So my advice would be to not worry about that, to take care of yourself, listen to your body, and um, when, when you know you need treatment, go ahead and go ahead and go for it. Don't don't be scared that you're overreacting. Heather, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and with survivors across the country. You can actually read Heather's story on the American Heart Association's national support network blog. Heather's story really reminds all of us why it's so important to continue supporting the work of the American Heart Association. Heart disease is the number one killer of women and it could truly affect anyone. Just like Heather, our final Women of Impact nominee, local realtor, Marilyn Berger Shank, became a heart survivor last year. Let's hear Marilyn's story. In August of 2020, I ended up in the emergency room with, with what I thought was reflux. And it turned out that I was actually in heart failure. And I also learned at that time that the number one cause of death in women is heart disease. Over the course of the next few months, I ended up having to not only spend a lot of time in the hospital, but in December of 2020, had a heart transplant. So when the American Heart Association came to me this past month and asked if I would be interested in being a woman of impact for the Go Red, I said, I'm your girl. I'd like to help women understand that we are at a higher risk of dying of heart disease then we realize and that heart symptoms are definitely different in women than they are in men. Thank you, Marilyn. And Marilyn is right. Far too many women don't know that heart disease is their number one killer and that the signs of a heart attack can be very different for women. These are the very challenges that launched the Go Red for Women movement 17 years ago. We are so proud to be part of the Women of Impact and the Go Red for Women movement. And I am so proud of everything this group of nominees accomplished and the fun we had doing it. The amount of money we raised in just nine weeks is incredible, and I am so excited to be able to reveal our grand total. $30,190. It's amazing to see what this group of women was able to do in such a short amount of time. I'm proud to celebrate this accomplishment with my fellow nominees and everyone joining us tonight. With so many people supporting us along the way, it truly was a group effort. But Women of Impact was also a friendly competition. And I'm so excited to announce our first Women of Impact winner. Congratulations, Marilyn. Marilyn Berger Shake is our very first Women of Impact winner and truly deserving of this honor. I wanna thank Heather and Marilyn and the American Heart Association for selecting us to be Women of Impact. We were the first, but I hope we won't be the last. 
So if you know of other women in the community who you would like to nominate to be among our next Women of Impact class, please reach out to the American Heart Association and find out how you can get involved. And please show your support right now by texting your donation. I love that. Thank you so much, Janet. And wow, over $30,000. Incredible. Janet, Heather, Marilyn, thank you for everything you've done. And you know what, guys? If those three ladies can raise $30,000, I think we can get close to our $5,000 goal tonight. Remember to text Lancaster Heart to 41444. And hey, if you had some friends that couldn't make it on tonight, you can text that to them and they can give as well. You don't have to be in the Zoom room to make a donation. And so as you heard Heather and Marilyn's stories, heart disease can affect anyone at any age. And the tiniest hearts can sometimes pose the biggest challenges. Austin and Addie Moran never expected that their baby girl, Shiloh, would become a heart survivor from the moment she was born. But heart heroes come in all sizes, you guys. And now I wanna introduce you to the Moran family. We are uh, Austin and Addie Moran. Uh, we've been married for five years now. Yeah, we, we have two children. Shiloh is one of them, and Declan is our, uh, our two-year-old boy. My pregnancy with her um, was great. She was healthy, and we had no reason to believe anything was wrong. Um, there was one ultrasound where the tech couldn't get a good view of her heart, and we were sent back in, um, but everything looked normal at that point. And just looking back, I it was just kind of a cool thing because from that point, I had this sense to pray specifically for her heart. On August 13th, she was born, and she was healthy. We had a great first day. Um, I think any parent can relate to the high of the first day. <laughs> um, so the following day, we were supposed to go home. We had, we were believing that we were going to go home. We were sitting in our room, you know, in the third day of having Shiloh, and it was like four hours since we saw her, and you know, Addie needed to feed her, and so we started getting really concerned. We knew something was wrong. doctor left the room like we were we were tearing up and crying while she was there but we were holding it together and when she left the room it just like everything fell from underneath us just this is just something that we held on to she said I don't know if you guys are spiritual or not but if we had done this test a day sooner like you wanted then we probably wouldn't have seen the co and you would have been sent home um, and she could have gone into heart failure. We get through the weekend, they determine a course of action, and Tuesday was supposed to be the, the day her open heart surgery was going to take place. And Monday night, it was like 9.30 p.m., they confirmed that she developed a staph blood infection through her central line, and it totally threw the, the idea of surgery. Like, we weren't even focused on surgery at that point. It was more so get her past the bacteria infection in her blood and kind of evaluate the risk-reward of waiting to do surgery versus doing surgery too early, and then the bacteria clinging on to the you know the medical parts that they that they used and which would require more surgery and so that was the lowest point in my opinion we found out last week she has a re-narrowing in her her aorta again uh, which happens from time to time with with kids who go through coarctation repair um, so we're going back to chop in a stent uh, and or a balloon is what they're going to use to 
to basically stabilize her and, and help her uh, continue to live a, a, you know, live a life, a full life. Uh, the, the fact that her life's going to be stabilized and repaired because of the, the fact that someone way back when made a donation to, into some technology or medical device that has become what it is today. gaining weight like a champ and doing all the normal baby things. I feel so thankful to know her now. I mean, I just, I think, I just couldn't imagine if we didn't, the things we would miss out on. She's just such a happy baby. We were so lucky to have family, friends, our church, um, uh, uh, Cargus, who allowed me to work remotely, like we had all these people supporting us, and without that, I don't know how people do it. I mean, we always said that every day. Yeah. Wow. Man, I tell you, this part of our program gets me every time, especially when sweet little babies like Shiloh are involved. Thank you so much to Addie and Austin and sweet Shiloh for, for being around to share their story. You know, people of all ages have been affected by heart disease and stroke in our community. I mean, I myself was born with a congenital heart defect. And, you know, so many of our survivors are with us still to tell their stories, thanks to the work of our local healthcare, healthcare heroes and the research that made their life-saving treatment possible. You know, the American Heart Association is currently funding, get this, $19.7 million. You heard me, $19.7 million in active research grants across Pennsylvania alone. You guys, it's just Pennsylvania. Your support at events and experiences like this one tonight make it possible for researchers to receive this funding and advance the heart and stroke care available to all of us right here in Lancaster County. You know, with your help, the AHA will be able to continue and accelerate pushing cardiovascular science forward, making our community a healthier place for everyone. Like you heard Dr. Gata say, everyone deserves to live a longer, healthier life. And that is our number one goal. So with your help, the AHA will be able to continue this work. So we ask that you open your hearts tonight to support this mission. Again, making a gift is easy. All you have to do is text Lancaster Heart to 41444. And remember, our goal tonight is to raise $5,000. Let's see where we are. Oh my gosh, you guys, we are a fifth of the way there. Thank you to Sherilyn. Thank you to Vienna, Catherine, Richard, and Elmira, Faith, Keith. Robert and Lucille, Tyler, thank you everyone who has given leading up to this event. And remember, if your friends couldn't join tonight, all you got to do is send them this information and they can make a donation from anywhere they are. And I'm so happy to see that we are making progress towards that goal because, you know, it really is every dollar invested really does provide future, right? Provide Shiloh's future. Um, and, you know, she may need another surgery down the line. And we are ensuring that whatever happens in the future, she will continue to thrive. So I want to say thank you. And remember, after you text um, 41444 with the message Lancaster Heart, you get a reply and you click on that link and it takes you to the Heart of Lancaster donation page. So I really wanted to give you kind of a glimpse into what what could your donations do, right? Like, what does it look like to support the American Heart Association? So for instance, you know, you'll see a few uh, donation options listed for you when you, when you uh, text the donate. Let's think about the $500 level, you know, just an example. For $500, you could ensure, we could ensure that 
hundreds of people are learned, are learned, are trained in hands-only CPR. We could truly save lives through our hands, through making sure that our community knows CPR. $250, maybe that's your sweet spot tonight. You know, through that donation, we could support families who may lack access to health, healthy food options. You know, food deserts are a very real thing. And we at the AHA say, where you live should not dictate how long you live. Um, and so a gift of $250 could help us combat those issues. Maybe it's $100, maybe that is your sweet spot. And you know what, like I said, whatever feels good to you, right? $100, think about that. You know, that could provide those critical resources for our patients that, you know, are out there that have had a heart, heart attack or a stroke or, you know, baby Shiloh. This will allow for our patients to become stronger survivors and thrivers. Okay. That's what your donation does. That is incredible. And, you know, we have a special level tonight in honor of sweet Shiloh. You heard in the video that she was alive for two days before she went out or went to her first um, open heart surgery, her life-saving open heart surgery. So would you consider giving a, a gift of $48 in honor of the 48 hours after she was born that she had her surgery? I would love for you to think about that. And you know what? If you want to give uh, in honor of Shiloh at that level, please do. But any level is really where it's at for us. We just appreciate you putting your time, talent, and treasures into our mission. We appreciate that so very much. And you can type in your own level in that uh, other field as well. So let's pull up the thermometer again, if we don't mind here. Let's take a look at our progress. All right, we're ticking it up a little bit. I appreciate I got to look here at the next one. George, Danielle, Larissa, thank you so much for your donations. We appreciate you. And, you know, in addition to honoring those affected by cardiovascular disease, your gifts tonight becomes part of what makes the American Heart Association's work right here in Lancaster County possible. So earlier, we shared some of those projects with you, as well as some exciting new initiatives that the American Heart Association has planned very soon. Your gifts are going to help us do that. One of those things is installing filtered water bottle filling stations at more local schools. That's so Cool. And I love what they said in the video that if the students are not water, if their bodies aren't processing, you know, foods and all that kind of stuff, they can't focus. They can't learn. This is about so much more than the heart. Um, and, you know, a couple other things that we, we're going to be doing, we're going to be providing education and support to help families eat healthier. Like I said, your zip code should not dictate how long you live. And so that is where we are going to be really focused in our communities to make sure that we are helping with that access to, to quality food. Helping everyone move more by making it easier to safe, safely walk and bike. You know, that's another big thing. Safe places to play, those kinds of things. And giving schools, families, and local organizations the tools they need to train those people in CPR. Again, creating a whole generation of lifesavers. And, you know, one of my favorite things that we do at the Heart Association is our advocacy. You know, we advocate for policies at the local, state, and federal level that do in the make our healthier. We are about sustainable, systemic change here at the American Heart Association, and you are a part of that, and we appreciate it. You know, in 2019, we actually advocated for the passage of legislation that now ensures all Pennsylvania high school students will learn how to save a life using hands-only CPR before they graduate. It's pretty cool. And also right now, we're advocating for incentives that help people afford more fresh, locally grown produce to feed their families. And as always, your support will fund that research that will shape the future of cardiovascular science and only benefit patients right here in our community. Maybe you, maybe your neighbors, maybe your friends and family. I mean, this is what we're talking about, systemic, sustainable change, and really providing solutions to these problems. So once again, it's easy to give a gift. Just text Lancaster Heart to 41444. And you know what? Hey, maybe you've given a gift tonight and you did it in honor of a family member, in honor of something that has touched your life through the work of the Heart Association. For me, um, it was my mom. She died, unfortunately, three years ago, but she was a stroke survivor and she fought very, very hard for many, many years. And it's because of the guidelines put forth by the Heart Association that she was able 
to live a full life for many, many years after her stroke. So as you're chatting in the chat box here, would love for you to hear <clears throat> about, or I would love for you to put in the chat here who you're giving in honor of, or what has happened through the Heart Association that has touched your life? How has our work touched your life? I would love to hear from you. And I know we've got some of our women of impact in the chat, so we know how the Heart Association has touched their life. We appreciate them sharing their stories. And, you know, I just, I would love to hear from you guys. What is it that has touched uh, your life? Oh, your grandmother, Ashley's grandmother uh, has been touched by the American Heart Association's work. And, you know, when we have survivors, you guys, it's not just about the survivors, it's about their families. You know, I love that. Okay, so again, the good news is that you can actually make your gift even after tonight's event is over. And again, you can text that information to them. Okay, so here's the other way that you can support, okay? Remember how I talked about gratitude being good for the heart? I also believe retail therapy is good for the heart. So don't forget that you can also show your support by checking out our online silent auction, which is still open. There are some great items in there, you guys. There is that stunning Lagos hinge cuff bracelet. Beautiful. Thank you to Brent L. Miller Jewelers. So pretty. It's a sterling silver, 18 karat yellow gold with a 0.71 karat diamond. Hello. Love that. Or there's a 14 karat gold and red coral inlay necklace from Finch Jewelers. Okay, do you see that? I'm just saying it would go really well with my earrings. Okay. It's really pretty. I love that. Or the date night in Hershey with overnight stay at Hotel Hershey. You know, my dad took me there when I was a kid and I loved it. It was so much fun. So that could be something cool for you to do. Enjoy a Lancaster Barnstormers game. Okay. I have not been to a Barnstormers game, but I am here for it. And here's what's cool about this one. It is a sky box. Okay. Holds 24 friends. Okay. And Look at that. I mean, I am so excited to actually be able to go to sporting events now. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Okay, this one's my other favorite. Two wine tasting packages at Thornhill Vineyards, one for four and one for eight. I love vineyards. Okay, love wine. Who doesn't? So that could be a good girl's trip or a couple's trip or maybe a guy's trip. I don't know. All I'm saying, guys, is if you win this and you don't take your wives, that's on you. Okay, ticket packages also are available to local attractions, including Longwood Garden, Gardens, Sight and Sound, Turkey Hill Experience, and more, and more. And there's gift cards to Tanger Outlets, local restaurants, spas, Mall about Spa Day. So make sure you get your bids in now because the auction closes at noon tomorrow, okay? Noon tomorrow, get your bids in now. Okay, now, lastly, Let's not forget that we've got some social media stuff going on. So please snap your selfies, post your pics and your favorite moments throughout of, of your AHA time throughout the year using hashtag Heart of Lancaster and tag us at AHA Pennsylvania. You can also stay up to date with different things happening throughout the state and anything that's available for volunteer opportunities in your community by following AHA Pennsylvania on Facebook, Twitter, and the old Instagram, okay? All right, so. Before we end tonight, I want to say thank you so much to all of you for opening your hearts and supporting the American Heart Association. But you know what? I'm real pumped to see you all in person next year at our 2022 Heartball. And to help us make that possible, thank you so much to Wellspan Health and Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster for already committing to sponsor next year's event. This is awesome. You know, we're talking about that sustainable stuff, man. I'm, I'm here for it. Thank you, Wellspan and Orthopedic Associates. We appreciate you. Again, together, your support, their support, our sponsors, everyone in Lancaster, we can be a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. We are the heart of Lancaster. So have a great evening. Please take care of yourselves, practice gratitude, check out that silent auction for some retail therapy, and please, please have a wonderful evening. Stay safe and stay healthy. Good night.